Back on MLB tonight with the, with Bill and Sean. I am Fran. All right, we're going to talk electric players, players you just you have to uh, keep your eyes on whenever they're playing, for the most part, whatever they're doing. And clearly, this guy's one of them, Ronald Acuna Jr. I don't think there's any doubt. When you talk about these kind of players, you talk about everything that can be done on a baseball field at a very high level. They seem to be able to cover it. I, I, it. It's amazing to me when you see some of the things that go on the field. Speed, arm, glove, uh, homer power, hitting power, all of those things that you talk about, five tool players. Um, I think it's a term that sometimes gets used too much. Five tool players, because to be a five tool player, it's pretty special and that's the conversation that Acuna Jr.'s in. I think the energy too, the energy Acuna brings, I think there's something special about what he does every day playing. This is a tough one right here. He, he, he homers and then goes down. But, you know, this yeah, guy. Hits the ball 450. He crushed one, crushed one. But this guy, for me, is one of the most exciting players in the game. And I think what he brings to that clubhouse, too, I think there's an energy when certain guys show up in the clubhouse, you're like, all right, we're ready to go because so and so's here. I think Acuna is one of those guys, brings a lot of energy to that team. And, and he, look, I mean, he's having a little fun there, I mean, with the LBJ move. And I know a few years ago he was getting knocked because I said he was doing too much stunting and looking at all his stuff and the ball thinks balls are out of the park and then they're hitting off the wall. But I think if you go back to the beginning of last year, I think he's changed. I mean, I think that he is he's an all hustle, all out guy every time he you play, see him. For me, he plays the game right. He plays it all out. Just he plays the game fun. hard. The right. one thing, though, is when he's standing in the batter's box <laughs> and the ball hits the outfield wall, uh, right. th you got problems with that. That's true, but I don't think we're seeing that as much, Bill. You will see it again. I don't think you probably, you're probably There right. is no question yeah, you will see it again. Right. Another guy, and we all agree with this guy, Byron Buxton. I mean, uh, yes. Byron Buxton, only issue with him, and it's tough because he actually just left the game over the weekend. They think, you know, tight right hit. But and he's been DHing for, for for most of the time here since he's come back from his sore knee yeah. injury case. But there, there's just no doubt about it. When this guy is right, I mean, I mean my goodness, he's one of the best players in the game. I mean, that, that, that ball he hit right there, well, that was second deck left center gap. I was on with Tommy that night. He says, Case, if you went out there and sat in that in a seat out there, no <laughs> one hits him. You say I'm safe. I'm no, not getting I'm hit not here. Safe. Yeah, my nachos are safe. I'm not getting hit left center <laughs> in Minnesota. No, Buxton hit one out there. This guy, you talk about five tools. Yes. And I think a big reason you see maybe a hamstring here, a hip flexor, he plays hard out there in center. How yep. do you stop a guy yep. from playing with those instincts that he has and the balls that he goes to get? He is so – I just want to see Byron Buxton. Give me 145 or 150 games, almost 600 plate appearances. I think we're going to see some huge numbers. Well, I think he could be an MVP. If, if he can give us 145 games, I think his talent is probably MVP laden. Mm -hmm. And I may go out on this limb right here, friend. I don't think that anybody – Ooh, hot take. In the game – Hot take. Does the most does the dynamic things that he does? Wow. I think his speed when he's gap yeah. to gap when he's playing center field. You watch him at a triple. You watch how far he hits a baseball yeah. and what he can do. I think he probably has tools that outrank yeah. everybody else. Yeah, I, that's a great point. When I it agree comes with that. to that, the, the problem is going to be he's been day to day earlier. He's day to day now. Right. And I can't have too many day to days. Because when he's day-to-day, -day, he's not going to play 145, 150 games. Right. If he plays 145, 50 games, he's possibly going to be the MVP. 11 stints on the IL throughout eight years. So that's right. – that's never had a 500-at-bat season for, for – Byron Bucks, you can't win the MVP and, with and less you, than 500. Yeah, you, you want to you want to get you want to get to 550, 570, maybe six if you can't for a whole season. All right, another guy here is it's a young dude, but man, he's got flavor, he's got swag, and he's got pop, and that's Jazz Chisholm down in Miami. I mean, Case, it's a little guy, but oh, man, can he he's blast got some the baseball? Thunder, man. He has got some thunder. Hits the ball hard. I like the way he plays, man. I think he comes to play hard every day. He's got a sweet left-handed stroke. Gets down the line. But you're right there. Look at that little little. Will Clark pose right there, you know, and 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 you you watch Jazz Chisholm play too. Guys has a guy has a lot of fun. Yep. I think one thing about baseball when you watch these guys, some of the young players, they're having a ton of fun. And I think for me, when I watch baseball, and I want to go out there to the park and bring my kids out there. Hey, watch these guys do it. They play hard, but they have fun doing it. He's the first guy I think of. You know what? I wonder because Derek Jeter was in Miami. Yep. Right. And I remember a conversation, and Jazz said, you know, I went up to him and said, okay, how do I do this? And what he was talking about is how do I become a Hall of Famer? 
because that's what he wants. And I thought that that was probably, when you talk about Derek Jeter, there has been people that wore the pinstripes, probably that rank higher as far as the player goes. Yep. Maybe not the dude, maybe not being Mr. Yankee. And I think when he went up to Derek Jeter and was asking him, how do I do this? He wants to be Jeter-like down there in Miami. And I think that's pretty cool because there's nothing that uh, his confidence can't fix. Right. And when you talk about dynamic stuff for a little guy, the far as he hits some balls, when he gets <laughs> yeah, out of right. one to right center, yeah. he hits triples, he gets on first, he steals second. He can do everything on a baseball field as well. Yeah, and, and, and look, there, there's some good young talent. I mean, down in Miami, you got Jesus Sanchez down there, Brian De La Cruz, they just picked up Jacob Stallings. Like, they're... It's, they've had a little bit of a rough patch here. They've dropped seven or eight, but we mentioned six of, uh, six of those seven losses have been by yeah. just one run. Right. So they're, with that young starting rotation, they're going to start to figure some things out. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think uh, good things that are on their way. That young starting rotation is good. Oh, my goodness. Also, another guy I mean, who put on our list, and he's a little bit older, but we still think he qualifies, and that's George Springer in Toronto because when he is going, he's healthy, and we've seen this guy in the postseason. I mean, he smacks the baseball case. He's another the guy though who plays at 150 miles per hour makes great grabs like that great arm great defender they they knew what they were doing when they went to get, went to get this guy that play is unbelievable the one he got in the gap he's done, he's done that a few times but Ross Atkins Mark Shapiro out there in Toronto yep. they knew what they were doing they, they, they know the character of this guy too you go back to the postseasons in Houston what he brought to that Astros team as far as the big home runs yep. right the big plays in the outfield you're seeing that in Toronto I think it's another thing too with him last year when he was hurt with that hamstring they missed him right they missed him oh, big yeah, time absolutely they're a different team with George Springer at the top of that lineup and what he does with the bat, how, how, how uh, many home runs he hits and how many big home runs he hits and the way he can play center field, right field, wherever you put him. The difference between him and everybody else who we talked about, he's already been there, done it. Yeah, right, right. You know right, what I mean? Right. And he's done it on a big stage, and, and I agree. He, is, he might not be as dynamic as some of the other guys, but the fact that he does it in a certain way, I think what adds to his... Uh, flair for this is the leadership ability because you talked about Toronto knowing what they were doing when they went and got him. Look at the young studs that Toronto has and then you bring him into right. the mix yeah. and it says okay I appreciate the fact you guys <laughs> want to play this game so much I'm going to show you how to a little bit mm. and you're right when he's in the lineup hitting lead off for him they are a completely different team and a much better team. But third in the American League in OPS so that, that's slugging and on base percentage from the leadoff spot, Taylor Ward, and uh, there's one more, Byron Buxton, only mm. two guys ahead. Wow, that's pretty good I mean, company. So pretty good that's, company. I mean, George Springer is getting some things done.